In the previous lecture, we discussed one example based on Mason's gain rule. Now in this presentation, we are going to discuss one more example based on Mason's gain rule. So let's get started. Determine the number of forward paths and the number of loops in the below signal flow graph. We are given a signal flow graph in this example and we need to find out the number of forward paths and the number of loops. So moving on to the solution. Firstly, we will discuss the forward paths. We know that a forward path is the path from the input node to the output node. So we need to find out the number of ways by which we can move from the input node to the output node. So let us start with the input node. If we start from this input node X and if we move to the node A, then if we move along this branch to this node B and then we move along this branch to this node C, then we move to this node D along this branch and then finally we move to this output node. In this way, we have started from node X, which is the input node and we travel to the output node. This is the first way by which we can move from the input node to the output node. And this is the first forward path, which is X, A, B, C, D, Y. Now let us try to find out any other way by which we can move from the input node to the output node. So starting from the input node, if we move from this node to the node A, then we move to the node E via this branch. Then we move to this node F via this branch. Then we move to this node D via this branch. And finally we move to this node Y. So this is the second forward path, which is X, A, E, F, D, Y. So till now we have two forward paths. Let us try to find out some more forward paths in this signal flow graph. If we start from this node X and then we move to this node A via this branch and then we move to this node B via this branch, then we take this branch to move to this node F and then we move to this node D via this branch and then finally we move to this output node Y. So this is the third forward path which is X, A, B, F, D, Y. I hope you got this. Let us now try to find out one more forward path. If we start from this node X and then we move to this node A, then we move to this node E via this branch. Then we take this branch to move towards the node C. Then we move to this node D via this branch. And then finally we move to this node Y. So this is the fourth forward path, which is X, A, E, C, D, Y. In this way, we have counted four forward paths in this signal flow graph till now. Do we have some more forward paths in this SFG? Pause this video and try to find out some more forward paths on your own. And if you are able to do it, let me know in the comment section. I hope you are done. So let us try to find out some more forward paths. If we start from this node X, then if we move to this node A via this branch, then we move to this node B via this branch. Then if we move to this node F via this branch, and then we move to this node E via this branch. And then if we take this branch to move to this node C, and then after that, we move to this node D via this branch. And finally, if we move to this output node via this branch, then in this way, we started from the node X, which is the input node, and we have arrived to this output node Y. So this is also a forward path, right? Yes, this is the fifth forward path, which is X, A, B, F, E, C, D, Y. We know that a forward path is the traversal from the input node to the output node such that no node is traversed more than once. See, we have traveled from the input node to the output node and no node is counted more than once. So this is also a valid forward path. Similarly, if we start from this input node X and then if we move to this node A, 
then if we move to this node E via this branch, then if we take this branch to move to this node C, then if we move to this node B via this branch, then if we take this branch to move to this node F, and if we move to this node D via this branch, and finally we move to this output node. So in this way, we have counted the sixth forward path, which is X, A, E, C, B, F, D, Y. We can see that we started from the input node and we traveled till the output node and no node is counted more than once. So this is also a valid forward path. So we can say that the number of forward paths in this signal flow graph is equal to 6. So now we are done with the calculation of number of forward paths. We will now count the number of loops in this signal flow graph. So this is the given signal flow graph and now we need to count the number of loops. So firstly, I want you all to observe this signal flow graph and guess the number of loops. I hope you are done. And yes, the first loop is B, C, B. If we start from this node and if we travel to this node via this branch and if we travel back to this node B via this branch, then it will form a loop. So the first loop will be B, C, B. Similarly, if we consider this portion of SFG and if we start from this node E and if we move to this node F via this branch and if we move back to this node E via this branch, then it will also form a loop. So the second loop is E, F, E. Now, I want you all to observe this signal flow graph carefully and check if we can find any other loop. Yes, if we start from this node B and if we move to this node F via this branch, then if we move to this node E via this branch, then if we take this branch to move to the node C, then if we move back to this node B via this branch, it will form a loop. We started from this node B and then we finally arrived to the node B. So this is also forming a loop, which is B, F, E, C, B. In this way, we have counted all the three loops in this signal flow graph. And we can say that the total number of loops is equal to 3. Moreover, if we observe these two loops, B, C, B and E, F, E, we can say that these two loops are non-touching loops because they do not have any common node. So we can say that the number of non-touching loops in this signal flow graph is equal to 2. In this way, we have counted the number of forward paths and the number of loops in this signal flow graph. And now I want you all to revise this example one more time and then after that I will give you some homework problems. Try these problems on your own. Identify the number of loops in these signal flow graphs. And if you are able to do it, let me know in the comment section. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this one here. See you in the next lecture.